is my car. And I'd like it to be your car. And so I'd like to give you this car right here. Well, that was an Alabama college student and a brand new employee of Bell Hops Moving uh, being rewarded with a car by the CEO after walking almost 20 miles overnight for his first day of work. That employee, Walter Carr, and his boss, Bell Hops Moving CEO Luke Marklin, joins us now. Walter, I want to start with you. Um, let's just let's just go through this. Uh, what, what, how come you had to walk in the first place? I didn't. Uh, my car went down and I didn't have a ride. The ride I had called off. Of called out on me, said he couldn't take me, so I had to find an alternative route to get to work, so I decided to walk. You decided to walk. Have you walked that far before, or did you just say, it doesn't matter, this is my first day of work and I can't miss it? I walked places long, long I think, shorter than that distance, so that was the longest distance I have ever walked. <laughs> so, I have walked before, I think that's the longest one, that's the, the top list of the longest walks I have ever done. So midway through, the police see you know some guy walking at 4 a.m. in the morning, and they pull they pull up to you and they, and they they start talking to you. Explain the conversation and what happened from there. I told him I said I figured you would pull. I told him I said I kind of from fire from my head that you would cut your lights on, hoping that you would cut your lights on behind me. And when he did, I was like I stopped. I was like, hey, he said. He got for my license. He was like, where are you going? I said, it's going to sound real crazy, but I'm actually heading to work. He was like, what time are you supposed to be at your job? I said, I'm supposed to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. He like, at 8? He, so, he said, what company you work for? I said, I work for Bell Hops, a moving company. We, um, we meet at the movers' house to move them at, and we're moving from the old house to the new house. And he asked me where I came from. I said, I came from Homewood. He said, what time you left home? I said, I left home 1140 ish midnight. So you say, he said, you've been walking since 12 midnight. I said, yes, sir, before you got me today in Pelham. Because I, I got to Hoover at 2 o'clock in the morning. I got into Pelham 3 going on 4. Wow. That's when Pelham police officers uh, picked me up and took me to get something to eat. <laughs> they got you some breakfast, and then they drove you to the, uh, to the job? Uh, they dropped me off at Midway. They, they know the other officers in the area in Pelham Parkway that I was in the area that I was walking to look out for me, make sure I get to the destination safely. He said one of his good brothers nine times out of ten will pick me up. And that he did three or four miles later. He was like, you walked the car. I said, yes, sir. He said, you going to uh, with wild children? He like, I said, yes, sir. He like, get in the car. I said, okay. So we drive. He said, you're going to be an hour early for work. I said, sounds great to me. And then we get there. He knocks on the door. He rings the doorbell for Miss Jeannie. And that, her and her husband answer the door. He tells them my story. And we get, I go in. They're like, do you want something to eat? I said, the office already fed me. They're like, do you want to go upstairs and lay down? And I'm like, no. I think we argued about five minutes about me laying down. I was right. like, I just want to go right. ahead and get the right. job done. Right. Let me ask you, Luke. Um, I don't know, first time uh, you ever have the employee of the year, someone the first day on the job? <laughs> right, what uh, did you is, think when you heard this story? This first. Uh, you know, this is this. I've heard this story a few times now, and, and each time it just uh, it still blows me away, and it just gets better and better. Um, and you know, when we woke up on Sunday and, and read the the post and and heard about the story, uh, it, it just blown away. You know, it, it's the the commitment, the resolve. Uh, these are these are things that are just truly special. And, and we felt nothing, nothing other than this is what we're about, and we, we got to show gratitude. You know, Walter, uh, I got to tell you, I think it's a great story. Um, we don't hear enough about young people uh, with that kind of determination in this country, and that's, you know, that's the American dream. You know, I got a lot of family from Alabama, and uh, they would walk long distances to get things done years ago. That was almost a commonplace thing, but you don't hear about these things anymore. So. You're famous now. What what do you plan on doing? Uh, just go out, and inspire more people, meet new people, hear their stories. Let them know somebody out there care. Um, with the GoFundMe account that I have, has reached a lot. I'll be donating to the Birmingham Air Foundation when everything settled in. Just go out to schools and, and listen to the students and people, and just inspire and help more people like I I love to do. Just go out and help people. Yeah, Luke, uh, I want to give you the final word. Uh, where do you go from here? Just a great story. 
You know, I, I think uh, we have a we have a real star in Walter, and you know, hopefully, uh, uh, people know that that's who we're about. And you know, I think our, our hopefully we're gonna have a really long relationship with Walter, and I, I can see a pretty bright future with him uh, at our company. So we just look forward to a, a really long relationship. Well, I got to say, uh, congratulations to you also for stepping up and offering him a car. And I want to say to both of you guys, God bless you. You're, you're a great, great inspiration. I'm glad you came to do the show tonight. Thanks for our, having our me. Our pleasure. All righty. Thank you. Uh, distractions and overreactions.